Cheers, guys. Epics 911. Welcome to the Sunday, April 23rd, 2017 edition of VR News. We're going to talk about being a spectator to somebody else playing a VR game or enjoying a VR experience. And right now, the status quo for that is basically you watch that person and see what they see via a computer monitor or a big screen TV, whatever they happen to be connected to. You see exactly what they see. There's no ability to kind of free roam. It's almost exactly like looking over somebody's shoulder to play an arcade game or a PC game and not having any ability to free roam. The problem is VR is a much more advanced technology for displaying. It should allow that. And thankfully, with this article and Vive trackers, exactly that is now possible. And it's all kind of based on that concept of mixed reality, where they've shown using a third controller and a camera, you can film it in such a way with that extra controller that to those watching the VR game, it looks as if the person playing the game is actually in the game world. And that's becoming increasingly more common. I personally like the way it looks. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, you know, it kind of can look a little Roger Rabbit-ish uh, if it's really, really cartoony, but I kind of like that. I got no issue with that. What we haven't seen much of other than HTC kind of flirting with this is the spectator watching you in the room being able to participate. Now, we've seen games where they can man the keyboard and, you know, go through the game world on the monitor. I get that. But being able to look around and walk around the room with you, yeah, like I said, other than HTC and what they did is they used the same mixed reality idea, a third controller and a mobile phone to allow another person to look around. So if the person playing the game is looking north, well, via the tablet, that spectator could look south. They weren't able to walk though, and that's where the trackers come in, the HTC Vive trackers. These two guys, and I've put the link to the YouTube video directly as well in the description below. You can see them do exactly that. They take one tracker, put it on a baseball cap, the other one on the back of a tablet. Now, not only can that person look around the world, but can actually walk around, share the same room scale space as the person playing the game. Now, not only does that open up all kinds of cool multiplayer co-op gaming, right? Think about it, room escape puzzles. You're able to do it in such a way though that you're also able to cater to people who might have extreme VR motion sickness. The kind of person who two to five minutes is too much, right? That totally would destroy immersion if every two minutes you gotta take a break for Benny because Benny can't handle the VR and gets nauseous and is literally counting the corn every five minutes. Can't happen. With this, they can. They can actually participate, walk around, interact. So I really like this technology. You'll see some latency in the video and that's simply because it was a proof of concept. They haven't done really much to streamline it or make it more efficient. Some of that is also due to the wireless technology. Most of that Cosmetic stuff that I have no doubt will be worked around. Can't wait to see what people come up with. All right, next story has to do with serializing 360 degree content. Now, the statement that they actually made was why VR needs serialized content right now. The article's on Upload VR and they talk about a lot of the 360 degree content being a little bit of this, a little bit of that, there's no real continuity. Or, you know, you might see one production company come out with a really cool documentary, and then the second thing, completely disjointed, has nothing to do with that. And for a lot of people, it makes it tough to, you know, actively be a 360 degree viewer because you're getting all these disjointed experiences. So what they talk about with serialization is having series, right? Maybe it's the entire planet Earth or season of shows. And I think that's coming. 
Much like the hype cycle, I kind of attribute that to just people being excited with new technology and they're experimenting. They're trying and pushing boundaries and seeing what they can do. I think that's going to calm down. I think this is the year where that happens. And we're not just going to see a volume of 360 degree content, but stuff that is serialized exactly like the statement in the article. Just a bit more patience, which, um, yeah, we've been really asked to do a lot of, but I think we'll all agree, you know, stuff is getting better. Stuff is getting streamlined. The technology's getting better. The games are getting better, and it's only going to continue to do so. Next news story has to do with Lytro's Lightfield camera. We last talked about these guys a week and a bit ago. So there is uh, an artist who has taken Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, which whether you're a Leonard Cohen fan or not, you've probably heard of it at some time. Even if you don't recognize the name, if I were to play it, you'd probably be like, oh, okay, that piece, right? There's an artist who's taken that, and it's a VR film studio within, and they've paired Hallelujah with the volumetric camera. And apparently the experience is absolutely amazing. Of course, it's not out yet, so we can't come to that conclusion ourselves or even see. But as soon as that is out, uh, you know, like I said, whether you're a fan of music or not, but particularly if you're a fan of music, that should be pretty damn impressive. I can't wait. And it also has to do with what I was just talking about, serialization. I've had this happen so many times, just as an example of that article, where, you know, I might find a music video, a 360 degree video that I like, and then the next thing has nothing to do with music. So I'm going to somebody else for a 360 degree music experience, and maybe that's subpar. And that's basically what they were getting at with the article. So just another case in point. Next story. And last one, this has to do with NVIDIA, and it's from Madison.com. It's a business section on the Madison.com website where they basically ask the question, will NVIDIA benefit from virtual reality? Now, the Captain Obvious, for those of us who've been around gaming or VR for quite a while now, the answer is, of course, they will. But let's dig a little deeper, or for those of you who may not have, you know, much of a knowledge about NVIDIA and AMD and how that's all put together, and just kind of quickly look at the GPU market and how it's structured. So there's basically two sides of it. You've got the discrete and you've got the embedded, two different markets. Discrete is your standalone GPU graphic cards. Those are the modular ones, the aftermarkets, the... NVIDIA GTX 1080s, the AMD RX 580s. Those are discrete GPUs. And when you look at the market share for that, NVIDIA is the leader. They've got 70% of the discrete market. AMD, the balance, 30%. Intel, another big GPU player, in fact, they've got the biggest market share, but not in this segment. They're pretty much zero. Then you've got what's called embedded, and that's all your built-in motherboard GPUs, your laptop ones. The market share, a little different there. You've got now Intel, even better than NVIDIA on the discrete, 80% market share. AMD 13 and NVIDIA 16. But the point here and this is a very important distinction, is whereas Intel has no market share of their own on the discrete side of things, both AMD and NVIDIA do on the embedded. And that makes them a lot more future friendly. And that's kind of where that question comes in. Is NVIDIA gonna benefit, right? Console market, there's not a lot of margin for these guys. So some generations you're gonna see AMD really involved. Other console generations, it's NVIDIA. Sometimes it's both. Not on the same console, different consoles, but the point being, they don't make a hell of a lot off of that. So depending on which way VR goes, we talked about that last week, uh, 
you know, is VR going to drive a different type of GPU ultimately? Just like we have GPUs for 3D Studio Max that don't deal with polygons, they, you know, do things differently. Are we going to see something like that on VR? So yeah, there's still some questions to answer that definitively. But if you look at it from a market share point of view, plus factor in NVIDIA and AMD both already have VR specific tool sets, SDKs, gaming GPUs tailored for VR, then yeah, it is a resounding yes. But it still will be neat to see how that evolves. Especially like I said with the VR specific GPU. Are we going to go in that direction? All right, guys, that is it for the news on this Sunday. The work week starts, my second to last. Am I excited? Hell yeah. Guys, hopefully you have a good week and you had a good weekend. As always, cheers.